أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا استعينوا بالصبر والصلاة إن الله مع الصابرين ولا تقولوا لمن يقتل في سبيل الله أموات بل أحياء ولكن لا تشعرون To be alive after death is a topic that won't make sense to many in this modern world. However, in reality, we observe that this phenomenon, that life hinges on death across every facet of existence. New cells cannot be born without the death of previous ones. Old ideas or beliefs can need to die for new perspectives to flourish. Certain habits or behaviors need to end or change to allow personal growth or new opportunities to arise. This phenomenon of life after death does not only apply on a molecular and philosophical level, but in reality, nations cannot live without the deaths of its individuals. The martyrs of Islam breathe life into the conscience of societies. Their ultimate sacrifice acts as the blood of the nations, fertilizing the soil upon which principles of justice, freedom, and righteousness flourish. This concept has been explained by, by Hazrat Muslim in one of his couplets. There is prosperity in doing good work, in doing hard work. There is life in death. So go and leap into the raging waves. Do not worry about the sea. The verses that I recited in the beginning, the translation as follows. O ye who believe, seek help through perseverance and prayer. Surely Allah is with those who are patient and who are perseverant. And say not of those who are slain in the way of Allah that they are dead. Nay, they are living. Only you perceive them not. Shahadat in the Arabic lexicon means testimony and witness. Now a question arises if shaheed means witness or testimony, why is it used for a martyr? Number one, angels give a testimony about that person's acceptance into heaven. Number two, the shaheed for the sake of God has given testimony to the truth by sacrificing his or her life. Number three, the promised Messiah والسلام, states that the status of the martyr is as such as if he is seeing and experiencing God. And number four, the promised Messiah والسلام, says this word shaheed is also derived from shahid, honey. And after going through the difficulties of life for the sake of Allah Ta'ala, they attain this sweetness as well. And just how shahid, honey, is like a cure so too are these shuhada like an antidote. Whoever is blessed with their company gets cured from their ills. This concept of sacrificing one's life for the sake of Allah Ta'ala predates the time of Hazrat Ibrahim alayhi salam. As he prepared to slaughter his son, Hazrat Ismail, Allah Ta'ala stated, وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِزِبْهِنْ azim." that we saved Ismail's, Ismail's life, but asked for a great ransom in return. And these sacrifices will be extended for a long period of time. And since the Prophet Wasallam was to be born from the lineage of Hazrat Ismail, he was saved. O oh, youth of the blessed Jamaat of Hazrat Masih Maud you bear a great significance to honor 
young men, perhaps even younger than you, drank from the cup of martyrdom. While we think twice before sacrificing our money for the, th uh, sacrificing the things we love like money for chanda, getting join joining nizam e vasiyat or our precious time to do jamaat work, these young men were eager to write their names in blood on the dirt of Arabia. Omar, a 14-year-old young boy, accepted Islam despite the pressure from his mother to abandon it. His love for God surpassed even the boundless depths of his love for his own mother. Two years later, the Prophet ﷺ is leaving Medina and set up camp a few miles out to inspect the army of 313 men. This was none other than the Battle of Badr. During the inspection, many young people like Omar, who had come along in their eagerness to ride with the Prophet ﷺ in this battle were sent back. Umar, the younger brother of Hazrat Saad bin Abi Waqas was only 16 years old at that time. He heard this instruction and he decided to hide. I'm gonna hide, I'm not gonna show my face. Hopefully the Holy Prophet ﷺ won't see me. And he thought maybe Allah Ta'ala will give me this honor of being a martyr. But eventually, the Holy Prophet ﷺ spotted him and told this young man to head back. Look at the response of Umar. He begins to weep. He starts crying, thinking that this chance of meeting his creator is about to flee. It's about to go away. He says, please give me one chance, one chance to fight and meet my maker. The Holy Prophet ﷺ, inspired, gave him permission and with his own hands affixed the sword to Umar. Umar leaped forward, attacking the enemy, cutting down people left and right, till many blows to his young body, he took his last breath and joined the ones who are truly living. In battle, they stood with the messenger in ranks. Intoxicated in love, they marched forward to the battlefield. The blood of sincere lovers was shed under the sword, like the blood of sacrificed animals flowing under the knife. My brothers and sisters, this was that zibh azim In the beginning of Surah Muhammad, Allah Ta'ala reminds the believers that if you help the cause of Allah with doing good works, by sacrificing your life, then Allah Ta'ala will establish you strongly in the earth and woe to the disbelievers who try to destroy the faith of Allah, but He will render their work useless. Have you not seen in the past what happens to those who stand against God? My brothers and sisters, I promise you the disbelievers of today will face the same fate because Allah Ta'ala states, that you are the Jamaat of Hazrat Masih Maud That means, that is because the believers, they are the ones who are protected. And as far as the disbelievers, they have no protectors. You being a part of Hazrat Masih Maud Jamaat, a man who was sent by God himself. And as it is the practice of Allah Ta'ala, to test the believers in all sorts of ways. Many people try to come and destroy the faith of Allah Ta'ala. Many pharaohs have stood up, whether at the time of Hazrat Musa, Moses, the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Hazrat Masih Maud Alayhi Salatu Wasallam, many people tried to fight against Allah Ta'ala, but they were met with the same fate. Even at the time of Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih Rabi Rahmullah Alayhi, the pharaoh of that time said that the Jamaat is a cancer. I will eradicate this jamaat with my own hands. But what did our beloved Huzur Rahmullah state? He said, Jamaat Ahmadiyya ka ek mawla hai, aur zameen o asman ka khuda hamara mawla hai. Lekin mein tumhe batata hoon, ke tumhara koi mawla nahi. Khuda ki kasam, jab hamara mawla hamari madad ko aega, to tumhe koi madad nahi kar sakega. Khuda ki takdeer, jab tumhe tukre tukre kar degi, tumhare naam o nishan mita diye jayenge, 
اور ہمیشہ دنیا میں تمہیں ذلت اور رسوائی کے ساتھ یاد کیا جائے گا اور حضرت مسیح معود علیہ صلاۃ وسلام جو عاشق محمد مصطفیٰ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ہیں ان کا نام ہمیشہ روز بروز زیادہ سے زیادہ عزت اور محبت اور عشق کے ساتھ یاد کیا جائے گا جماعت احمدیہ ہیز اے پروٹیکٹر ہو از دا لارڈ آف دا ہیونز ان دی ارتھ بٹ آئی ٹیل یو یو ہیو نو پروٹیکٹر آئی اسویئر بائی گاڈ وین آور لارڈ کمس ٹو آور ایڈ نو ون ول بی ایبل ٹو ہیلپ یو وین گاڈ ڈکری بریکس یو ان ٹو پیسز یور نیم اینڈ ٹریس ول بی ایراڈیکیٹڈ فرام دا ورلڈ فار ایور and you will be remembered with disgrace and humility. And Hazrat Masih Ma'ud alayhi salam, the true lover of Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his name will always be remembered with increasing honor, with increasing love, and with increasing devotion day by day. My beloved brothers and sisters, Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salam revitalized the character of Ahazur sallallahu alayhi wasallam in the earth once again. He states, I aspire that if I die and live again, it is solely to dedicate my life for the sake of Allah. Every time I die and live again, my passion grows with renewed zeal. These are the words that he stated for himself. And he said these same words for, our, uh, for us as well. He says, Islam ka zinda hona hum se ek fidya mangta hai. Wo kya hai? Hamara isi rah mein marna. That the vitality of Islam demands a sacrifice from us. And what is that sacrifice? It is our readiness to die in this very cause. This is the death upon which the life of Islam the life of Muslims and the manifestation of the living God depends on. My brothers and sisters, there are individuals who followed these, ver- these words of the promised Messiah والسلام, completely and faithfully. Hazrat Sahib Zada Abdul Latif Sahib, anhu, one of the most religious scholars in Kabul. He was a very rich man. He had thousands of acres of land. He had hundreds of thousands of disciples. He was the, the, the favorite scholar of the Amir. The year was 1900. He picked up the book, Aina Kamalate Islam. And right away he knew that this man was truthful. The man who wrote this book could not be a false person. And he accepted the promised Messiah salam, right away by writing it to him in a letter. A few years later, while attempting to go to Hajj, only to be stopped since Hajj was prohibited that year due to the plague in Punjab, So he decided to go and convey the salam in accordance to the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam to the promised Messiah alayhi salam. After spending some time in Qadiyan and reaping the blessings, he received a few revelations about his imminent death. Even the promised Messiah alayhi salam received some revelations about his death. But as time came, he knew he had to go back knowing full well what was in store for him upon his arrival. But it was his conviction in Ahmadiyyat to go back to Kabul and give that land the gift of his blood. It was his conviction. And upon his return, the Amir Habibullah, who was, he, he was an advisor for, put him in jail right away. And he suffered in this jail with such severest cruelties, unimaginable, for four years. Habibullah continuously tried to tell him, recant your beliefs, just leave it. I will put you back into the same state. I will give you that same high post in my kingdom. Met with the answer, a resounding no. I cannot do that. I will not let falsehood triumph over truth. I have seen the truth, I have witnessed it. Do what you want to do. His punishment was announced, death by the way of stoning, hung around his neck, threading his nose like cattle and dragging him to the place of his execution. A man in this situation would be crying, begging for mercy. Whatever happens, save me from this situation. This was not the case with Sahib Zada Sahib. He walked swiftly with his chest out with pride and happiness. He thought of that 150 pound chain across his neck 
as the ornament to go meet his creator. And at that time, he was put in the ground, waist deep. Habibullah once again came to him and said, recant your beliefs. Please, go come back. Met with the same response. He was left with no other choice to say, I'll even say it on your behalf. You don't have to say it. And he was already a shaheed before he was murdered. He had already witnessed the truth of Hazrat Masih Ma'ud alayhi salam. He says, do what you may. I will tell everybody that you are a liar. And this is not what I believe. Hazrat Muslim Ma'ud alayhi states that as they were pelting him with stones, he was praying for them. That, oh Allah, guide these people to the right path. This was the person who received the rank of martyrdom before his death. This was a true shaheed. Hazrat Masih Ma'ud alayhi salam, in reference to him, writes, God will not overlook this brutality and the terrible consequences of this event shall be witnessed. It has been reported that after the killing of the deceased martyr by thousands of stones, an epidemic of cholera broke out in Kabul, and a great number of people, including prominent men and dignitaries of the state, and a number of Amir's relatives perished, but that is not all. This was the most merciless murder which has no parallel under this heaven. Alas, what a pity. O oh, land of Kabul, you are witness to the heinous crime committed on your soil. O oh, miserable land, you have in the sight of Allah been condemned as you are the scene of the most atrocious crime. From that day till today, my brothers and sisters, you, are, you and I are all witness to what is happening. Brutality, restlessness, chaos, only because Allah Ta'ala is the, the, the friend of those who believe. He is the protector of those who believe. Even kings, countries, nations who stand up in front of God have, will not be seen. The promised Messiah. The promised Messiah salam, addressed Sahib Zada Sahib in these words, O oh, Abdul Latif, may thousands of blessings be showered upon you, for you have in my own lifetime manifested unparalleled fidelity for me. And it, I don't know what my followers will do and will behave when I am no more among them. And this is the question for you and I. Hazrat Masih Ma'ud states, I don't know what they will do after I come. When you love something, you make a sacrifice for it. You don't compromise. We say we love Hazur. We say we love the Khalifa. Do we obey the Khalifa? We say we love Allah Ta'ala. He is our creator. He is everything to us. Do we obey the commandments of Allah Ta'ala? Hazrat Masih Ma'ud salam stated in reference to a dream that he saw that there will be many others that God would send on the precepts of Sahib Zada Sahib and more would follow these footsteps. And as we know, many more did. 1974, Gujarat Muhammad Afzal Kokar Sahib, standing next to his son, Ashraf Mahmood Kokar, after seeing his son shot point blank, the gunman turned to Muhammad Afzal Kokar Sahib. What do you think? Do you now denounce Ahmadiyat? Do you want to come to the real Islam? Muhammad Afzal Kokar, says, do you think a son like him, a brave son like him would have a cowardly father? Upon then, right again, he got shot and attained that uh, martyrdom. <laughs> he joined the ranks of Bal Ahya'u, Wala Killa Tash'urun. Upon the completion of a hundred years of Khilafat, our beloved Imam Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asl Aziz took an oath from you and I. He says, today on the completion of 100 years of khilafat Ahmadiyya, we make a solemn pledge in the name of Allah the Exalted that we shall continue to strive until the last moments of our lives for the propagation of Islam in Ahmadiyyat and shall convey the name of Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the ends of the world. My brothers and sisters, exactly two years after that, on May 28, 2010, the Lahore Jamaat fulfilled this pledge 
where 86 people were martyred for the conviction in their hearts and became forever inscribed on the annals of Ahmadiyya's history in glistening gold. At the time of Bere Mauna and Jange Uhud, there were 70 people respectively that were killed. Very similar situation. Had Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not uh, shown perseverance and patience, then the Muslims would not have been able to bear that loss. And just like that, our beloved Huzur Aydullah Ta'ala bin Asl Aziz showed that same resilience, that patience and perseverance once again, and fulfilled the promise of amna, that he will surely give them in exchange security and peace after their fear. Huzur Anwar Aydullah Ta'ala bin Asl Aziz said, Today, the dust of our martyrs too gives off this fragrance and is telling us not to let it go, let go of patience, and we have held on to it. God is true to his promises. Our resolve should not waver due to the length of the trial, and no word of ingratitude should be uttered. Blessed are the Ahmadis of Lahore who have shown patience and persistence. Jo sache momin ban jate hain, mot bhi unse darti hai. Tum sache momin ban jao, aur khof ko paas na aane do. Those who become true believers, even death fears them. Then become true believers yourselves, and let not fear come close. My brothers... Brothers and sisters, this does not just happen in other countries. The blood of Ahmadis has been shed on the soil of the United States as well. In 1983, Dr. Muzaffar Ahmad Sahib was shot point blank for no other reason other than witnessing the truth of Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salam. But look at this. The murderers decide to burn down the mosque after killing him only to prove once more that the disbelievers have no mola, they have no protectors, both of whom, whom who burned to death while attempting to burn down the house of Allah. And the amount of exposure Jamaat Ahmadiyya USA received after this incident proved Bal la Dr. Muzaffar Shaheed gave life to this Jamaat more than those who are living today. On December 23rd, 2006, Muhammad Karim, Muhammad meaning a protector, an attribute of Allah Ta'ala, heard his employees yelling for help outside his barber shop in Chicago. He ran out to defend them and saving the lives of his Christian employees, he sacrificed his own, dying of multiple gunshot wounds. Huzuri Anwar Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asl Aziz coined him and declared him, Muhammad a martyr, a shaheed. For more than a century, Ahmadis have been sacrificing their lives for the sake of God. Have their sacrifices gone in vain? No. Rather, not only did God elevate their name and status of these martyrs, he also made it a means for continuous progress of Jamaat Ahmadiyya. These are the people who are enabling the success of those left behind. How could they be considered dead? Nearly one year ago, January 11th, 2023, a remarkable testament to unwavering conviction unfolded in the heart of the Mahdi Abad community in Dori, Burkina Faso. Nine Ahmadis, resolute in their faith, were martyred for their refusal to denounce Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salam. Imagine, a tranquil mosque, time for Isha almost about to start, when eight men came on motorcycles. They sought out the Imam of the mosque seeking to challenge the beliefs of Ahmadiyyat. Imam Al Haj Ibrahim Bidiga Sahib, a fortress of unyielding conviction, answered their questions. They asked about Hazrat Masih Maud, they asked about Ahmadiyyat, to which Imam Sahib expounded on the advent of Hazrat Masih Maud. 
And the terrorists dismissed Hazrat Masih Maud and said that he was a false claimant. They gathered them one by one, the women, the children, the elderly in another place, and took the men in the courtyard. They offered them salvation and said, this is your opportunity. Think about it. Do you want to live or do you want to die over this false belief? He grabbed Imam Saab and put a gun to his head. His response, everyone is going to die eventually. If not today, then tomorrow. We cannot compromise our faith in exchange for saving our lives. We cannot abandon the truth which we have seen and witnessed for ourselves. The terrorist laid him down with a knife to his neck. Even till the end, Imam Sahib said, if you want to kill me, let me stand upright. I am dying for who? Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salam. Bidiga Sahib refused to let falsehood overcome him even in his final moments and was shot and thus became the first martyr of Burkina Faso in Dori. The terrorist anticipated that this would really fear, this would instill fear in the rest of them and they would relinquish their faith moving to the next elder, the next person. To their surprise, they, he was met, they were met with the same response. They found contentment in walking in the same path as Imam Saab did. Resolute, standing tall, ending with a tragic gunshot to his head. They repeated this with every single one of them, one by one. Each martyr endured, endured about three bullets to their head, out of which two of them, twin brothers. When the final person, A.G. Adraman Aguma Sahib, the youngest of them all, 44 years old, seeing seven of the people with gunshot wounds in their head, dead in front of him, stood tall and said, I will accept the same fate as my brothers did. The terrorist offered him saying that you have a long life ahead of you. Don't follow these men. But he echoed the same sentiments and sacrificed his life for Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salam, for Hazrat Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, for Allah Ta'ala. Their wives and children were made to stand and watch. Yet no one wailed or exclaimed. Rather, they showed unparalleled patience. They were all given the option to deny the truthfulness of Hazrat Masih Maud alayhi salam as a result which their lives would be spared. However, these individuals in a remote part of the world had never seen Hazrat Khalifa al-Masih, had never met him physically. Their faith was even stronger than mountains. Hazrat Anwar Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Asl Aziz said in regards to these soldiers of Allah Ta'ala that these are the people who have gone down in the history of not just Africa but Ahmadiyyat all over the world. They gained eternal life for themselves. They fulfilled their oath of sacrificing their life, wealth, time to the fullest extent. They who never accepted oppression, nor bowed to false gods, nor accepted the extremes of tyranny, nor acknowledged faithless killers. Yes, indeed we are those people. Indeed we are those people. Never doubt for a second that those who sacrifice their lives or face oppression endure a painful end. No. In reality, they are beloved in the sight of Allah. Rather, it might be us who are being protested, indulging in sins while they've secured a place beside their creator. God remains in illusion until we have recognized him. But once you recognize God, the world will become your illusion. As long as we have people like Sahib Zada Abdul Latif and Muhammad Afzal Koker, Dr. Muzaffar Ahmed, and mothers who tell their sons to go and pray in the same area where your father let, uh, was shot and killed. Go and stand in that same exact spot 
where your father's blood stained the floor. As long as we have these people in us, then by God, then by God, this Jamaat will flourish and grow as was promised by Hazrat Masih Maud and by Allah Himself, as He states, Inna fatahna laka fatahn mubina, that verily we have granted thee a clear victory. The onus is on us, though. It requires us to get out of our slumber like state. When Hazrat Khalifa al Masih bin Asl Aziz reminds us to focus on congregational salat. Come to the masjid, come to the masjid, go to salat centers. Do we sacrifice or do we surrender? When he reminds us of our dealings with our families, our friends, our wives, our husbands, we have just heard this. Do we sacrifice or do we surrender? When Hazur Ayyadullah Ta'ala bin Azza Aziz reminds us of financial sacrifice. His desire of getting 50% of Jamaat members to join Nizam Vasiyat. Do we sacrifice or do we surrender? Will we let the blood of these martyrs flow in vain? Do we sacrifice or do we surrender? May Allah Ta'ala make us a witness. Make us, make, may Allah make us a shaheed. If not with our flesh, then at least with our hearts, with at least with our minds. Who shahidane ummat ka ekam nazar, raiga kab gaya tha jo ab jayega. Har shahadat tere dekhte dekhte, pool phal laegi, pool phal jayegi. O bereft of vision, when has the blood of martyrs ever been wasted? You will witness every martyrdom will cause flowers to blossom, every martyrdom will bear fruit. وَآخِرُ دَعْوَانَا أَنِ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ